Lord, this time together as a church family is precious. It's like a weekly family reunion. It's like a weekly debriefing from the past week. It's like a weekly briefing for the week to come. It's like a triage center where we come together and we allow your Holy Spirit to assess what our needs are. And we allow your Spirit and your Word and the presence of your Spirit and the presence of our brothers and sisters in Christ to help us to unpack and unravel the mess, <laughs> the mess of our hearts and lives. And so, Father, I pray that you would be our teacher today, that your word would ring true, that the truth of your word would speak to the very depths and the core of who we are. And in your mercy, oh, and in your mercy, that you would do the heart surgery that we all need to make us more like Christ. It's in your son's name we pray these things. Amen and amen. Matthew chapter 13, uh, beginning in verse 47, says again, again, the kingdom of heaven is like, is like what? Well, it's like a net uh, that was thrown into the sea a net that was thrown into the sea. When we were in Florida uh, a few weeks ago, we went to the beach. While we were there, um, people were out swimming and enjoying the surf, and I mean, it was, it was absolutely beautiful. And um, while we were there and everybody's out in the water swimming around and wading around, there were these two kids. <laughs> there were these two kids that had fishing poles, and I mean, they had these big fishing poles, and, and the one kid, he was like, he leaned back, and he went, Z-Z-Z-Z-Z. and I'm thinking, what is he trying to catch? I mean, there's people out there swimming around in the surf, and so they're throwing, the, the two of them are throwing their fishing lines out in the water, and finally some guy came up and said something to him. I don't know what it was, and so they left, but then one of the kids came back. One of the kids came back. And, and he had something that I've, I've seen before. It, it looked like this. This fishing net. They're weighted around the edge. There's a drawstring, and you get it together with teeth and hands and wrap around, and you do this spinning motion kind of like uh, when, you're, when you're spinning pizza crust. It's kind of you throw it out like that, and the weights spin out, and it lands, and you let it go down, and then you pull on the string. And when you do, if there's fish and it lands there, and they don't swim away, you'll catch them and bring them in. But some people, when they think of this idea of a, of a drag net or of a fishing net, they'll think of this. This is another picture that might help us to see it in um, times of Jesus' time. This was used, but here's, here's another, another view uh, a little bit better. If you look at the, look at the screen, um, on the left-hand side, there's a gentleman, and then, then you can see a little bit of a dotted line. That's the top of the floating of the net, and it goes out into a big kind of a U or bell curve kind of thing, went out, and then it comes back in on the right-hand side. And as I understand it, um, that they would either take it and walk it out around, or more often than not, a ship, a boat, a fishing boat, would get the one end and would go out and drop, keep dropping net and bring it around to the front. And when it had a chance to be able to settle in, then the, all the workers there would begin to draw the net up on the shore. And by doing so, they would catch, very important, whatever was within that net netted area. Um, kind of an interesting way to be able to fish. Different than, you know, Zebco and you, you catch whatever it is that you have that, that happens to be. This you're catching 
lots of everything. And so the passage says, you know, again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea, and, and, get, and then it says, and gathered fish of every kind. So again, whether it was drug out into the sea or thrown into the sea, the important part to this parable is that it gathered fish of every kind. Um, it, didn't, it didn't just go and say, I'm looking for trout. I'm looking for flounder. I'd like salmon today. It, it, whatever was there, that's what you were going to catch. Uh, this word phrase of every kind, in looking at Strong's Concordance, it helps to define and explain the words uh, from, uh, that, that Christ is using or that, that are used here in Scripture. Um, because they're written in in a different language that we don't understand. This word in the Greek is genos, genos, um, or you might say genos. It means a kind or a country, diversity, every generation from every uh, country, from lots of diversity, from every kind or kindred, from every nation, from every offspring, from every stock. Now, some of those words you say, that, that kind of sounds like animal, the animal kingdom. Yeah, that's kind of the idea that it's saying. And yet, there are words in there that you say, oh, I, I, I think I see where he's going to be drawing a parallel. When they threw the net out, when they, when they drug the net out and they began drawing it back in, they weren't gathering the fish, specific only the ones that they wanted. They got all kinds of stuff. They might get starfish, even though they weren't looking for them. They they might have gotten a crab that was walking across and got hung up in the net and pulled in. They could have gotten a lobster, even though they weren't looking for that. They were looking for this particular kind of fish, and they'd get a little bit of everything or a lot of everything, but the important thing was every, every kind. This parable struck me different than I expected it to. And at every turn, I was at the emergency room um, again earlier in the week, and um, the emergency room is a place for all kinds of people. Amen? Um, I walked through Walmart the other day, and Walmart is a place for all kinds of people. Uh, we, went, we went on vacation and stopping at tr- road stops, you know, place to get out, stretch your legs, go use the restroom. There are all kinds of people. Um, while we were down in Florida, there, um, we stayed with Beth's cousin, and across the road, um, the, um, the house was having its roof replaced. And the, the guys that were replacing it spoke a language I didn't know, and I couldn't speak to them. I played my guitar for a little bit, and they asked me to come back and play some more. And as I sat there playing, I realized, here's some people that are different than me, and if I wanted to tell them about Jesus, I couldn't do it. We think of the different kinds. I, I look around here. We have men, and we have ladies. We have people who are older, and we have people who are younger. We have people wearing glasses and people without glasses. We have people who vote conservative, who vote liberal, who vote independent, who are registered Republican, Democrat, or something in between. We have people who have hobbies of every kind under the sun. And when we look at this passage that Jesus is speaking to his disciples. Remember, remember the Jewish people and their view of Gentiles. What was it? Well, they hated them. They hated them. I, mean, I don't know that they would have said this, but their feelings certainly would have been that hell couldn't be hot enough for the Gentiles. They didn't have any time for them. And the Samaritans, same thing. And the Samaritans toward the Jews. I mean, they're just, it's us 
for and no more. We, we, it's us. We don't want anybody else around us. And so as you read this, Jesus is talking to the Jewish people and saying, you know, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea. They're like, yes, to get us, Jews. But then he, sec- he tags on to the end, but they gathered fish of every kind. They, they would have understood that. They would have seen it. But as I was reading this, my mind rushed to Revelation chapter 5, verses 9 and 10 that reads, and they sang a new song, saying, Worthy are you, Jesus, to take the scroll and to open its seals, for you were slain, and by your blood you ransomed just a few people. No, ransomed people for God. Read this with me from every tribe and language and people and nation. By your blood, Jesus, you ransomed, you redeemed, you hauled in, you have caught, you have spent your life and precious blood for people from every tribe and language and people and nation And you have made them a kingdom and priest to our God, and they shall reign on the earth. We might have a little better understanding of this than some people, but we still, we still, I'm convinced, need to be reminded of this, that Christ died for all mankind. That Christ died for the people like you and me and the people that are nothing like you and me. And so verse 48, again, still teaching the familiar, teaching them what they would have seen and understand. And in my mind, I, I see this, that Jesus may have been along the shore. He may have been seeing Uh, nets being drawn in as he said to them when it was full when the net when the net was full men drew it ashore and sat down and sorted the good into containers but threw away the bad this is the picture again that they would have been maybe seeing in front of them. Certainly, this would have been familiar and part of what they would have seen in their minds as Jesus said, when when it, when the net is full, then men drew it ashore and sat down and they sorted the good into containers but threw away the bad. Um, David Guzik says that Jesus shows here that the world will, will remain divided right up until the end. And, and if you can see my hands here for a second, we think of it as this is the bad, my right hand is the bad, and this is the good on my left hand. We think of it like this, easily divided, easily distinguished. It is not. It is like, it's not even like this. It's like you have a bucket of black sand and a bucket of of, uh, white sand and you pour them together and you go into a dark room and say, separate them out. Because you and I do not see the hearts of others at all. But it says here, again, that there is a separation Look at verse 47 again, just to remind ourselves. He says, again, the kingdom of heaven is like. So Jesus is not teaching them about fishing. He's not teaching them about drawing in the net, but he's using that as an example, as a teachable moment to teach about the kingdom of God. And so, and so he says in verse 49, verse 49 it says, so it will be at the end of the age. So he's using the example, there's a net, Lots of fish, lots of different kinds. The good ones doesn't necessarily mean 
that he was catching all the flounder. It might be all the healthy flounder. It might be all the, the um, healthy rock bass. It might be all the healthy trout. It might be the ones that don't have disease. It might be the ones that are big enough to be able to eat. It could be all those things or, or none of those things, but it separated them. So it will be at the end of the age that the angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the fiery furnace. In that place, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. We've come into an age in churches and in society that we don't like to talk about punishment. Um, When I grew up, I think parents got around and all talked about punishment and great ways to punish their kids because they certainly seem to be experts at it. Uh, And I still turned out the way I did, so, you know. But we don't like to talk about hell. It makes us uneasy. Let's talk about God's love. Let's, Let's talk about the good things. Let's talk about God taking care of us and meeting our needs. And yet, this is a teaching from Christ The kingdom of heaven is like a net. It's going to gather the good and the bad into one place, but there will be a day, there will be a time when they are separated. There will be a time when it gets gets righted. When the ones that have put on a really good show, they will be able to see, eh, it's it's not all that. It's like going into the supermarket to pick up a watermelon. There's a whole bunch of watermelons there. If my wife sends me to pick up a watermelon, there's no telling what, what ripeness the watermelon will be. But some of you ladies, you know the deal. You know how to go thump, thump, thump on it and be like, yep, that one's ready. But I might not. And so as they, as they separate out the fish, separating the good, the evil from the righteous, it says, verse 50, and we'll throw them into the fiery furnace. In that place, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. I am convinced that in heaven, there will be some Republicans. Before we laugh too hard, I'm convinced that in hell, there will be some Republicans. I am convinced that in heaven, there will be some Democrats. And I'm convinced that in hell, there will be some Democrats. I am convinced that in heaven, there will be people from Townville. And I'm convinced that in hell someday, if not already, there will be people from Townville. I am convinced that someday, there will be people in heaven from Chapmanville Community Church. And I am not so foolish as to think that someday there will be people in hell from Chapmanville Community Church. The church that we see today is church with a small c. It's not necessarily the redeemed It's a lot of us that come to church for a lot of different reasons. And if we think about this great big net that's around us, are we sure to say that we're all righteous and good? That everyone who has come to our church or everyone who is in church at this hour on a Sunday morning, that they're all children of God, they have accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, their name has been written in the Lamb's book of life, they have received the free salvation available from Jesus Christ because he died in their place for their sins, they've received it and they're living a life to honor and glorify God. Are we, are we really so foolish as to think that every church and every attender in churches across America today that they are part of the righteous? I will tell you that there was a season in my life when I was not that, and I still was in church. And so as I look at this passage, and and I reflect on what it is that Christ is saying, 
I have to tell you, friends, do we realize that our friends and our families and the people that are sitting with us at the diner or at church or in the living room that do not know Jesus Christ as their Savior, when they take their last breath, if they have not accepted Christ as their Savior, they will step into a godless eternity. They will burn in hell where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. Do we recognize that? That it's not just that they'll be separated from us, but they will be separated from the presence of the Holy Spirit tugging on their heart to draw them to Him? Do we have a burden for the lost? Or are we glad that we're going to go to heaven and the rest of them, well, whatever happens, happens? Jesus is speaking here and speaking very clearly to them. And for the Jews, for the Jews who would hear this and say, yep, he's catching me, Jesus is making it clear, you know what? Just because you're here doesn't mean that you're one of the righteous ones. It, yeah, the fishermen are trying to catch all the good ones, but not necessarily, they're not necessarily catching all the good ones. The net's there, the opportunity's there, but sometimes there are people who reject, they reject what, what Christ has offered. They put on a good show, and from the outside, like that melon, like that watermelon at the supermarket, it's green, it has stripes on it, it looks like what a watermelon should look like, but, but maybe there's nothing good on the inside. Maybe that fish that's down in the uh, uh, seafood area that you go and you buy, you're like, well, that looks like it's good, but then you take the wrapper off and realize it, this, this is bad. There's something bad wrong about this. Maybe you're here today and you've done a, a great job of, of masking what really is going on inside of you. And maybe you think that you have fooled a lot of people. But I promise you, as I, as I say this, I speak to myself and the Holy Spirit speaks to me as well. You might fool a lot of people, Glenn, but, but don't think that you'll fool God. There will be pastors in heaven. There will be pastors in hell. It's not a matter of Methodist, Baptist, Catholic, community, non-denominational, independent, Presbyterian, CMA, they're all going to heaven and everybody. It's, that's not it. I, I think I'm making myself clear. I'm not singling anybody out. There is one way that you get to heaven, and it is by receiving Jesus Christ as your Savior. And we can go through the motions and make it look good on the outside to everybody around us, but friends, God knows our hearts. God knows our hearts. Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, when are the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Again, we've said this as we've taught this. This is not a matter of if you do good works that you get into heaven. We're saved by grace through faith. It's not of works. It's still by grace through faith so that we can do good works, so that we can live the way God wants us to. Let's not switch those around and get those backwards. But I got to tell you, there's a lot of religious people that say the right thing, pray the right way, carry the right Bible, go to the right church, march in the right things for the right causes that go along with the right thing that they're supposed to do. I said, Lord, Lord. I did all kinds of good things for you. He says, no, that's not it. Verse 22, on that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do mighty works in your name and stand for this cause and this cause and stand up against this injustice and, and this wrong that's going on in our world? Did, didn't we stand and do all those things? and cast out demons and do mighty works in your name, and then I will declare to them, I 
never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. I'm going to go back to this picture again of the, of the drag net. This picture is what those listening to Jesus would have seen in their mind. Something like this or the other one, but they would have been seeing it. This casting of the net, the laying and placing of the net to grab and pull in everybody and any, any fish they could get, and then the sorting will be taking place. I said before at the beginning of the message that the term dragnet means a system of coordinated measures for apprehending criminals or suspects. A system of coordinated measures for apprehending criminals or suspect, suspects. Here's my question for each one of us. Individually and corporately as a church, what is our system of coordinated measure for reaching the lost for Jesus Christ? What system do you have? What system are you living out in your life? I don't mean, well, I give money to the church and the church should do it. That's great. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Individually, that doesn't get us off the hook. What is your system? What is your plan? What are you doing individually as a follower of Jesus Christ to, to make fishers of men, to find fishers of men, to find people that are part of the cast of the net? You think of your house and your house and your neighborhood and your workplace and where you live and where you shop. You cast a net every single day that you are there. What are you doing to make sure that that's not just temporal, but that that is something being done for the eternal kingdom of God? What, what are your, what's your plan? And are you executing on it? And as a church, it's not just a matter of sending money to missionaries who are overseas. That's great. Praise the Lord. We're helping the nets that are being cast out there. Friends, I promise you, our missionaries do not go so that we can sit back and not do anything. You and I have a net in our hands. I have been convicted by this passage because I want to be casting the net. Say, I can't save everybody. I can't save anybody. That's up to God but I need to do a better job of casting that net because Christ came to die for all mankind, not just the few, not just the ones like me and like you. Bow with me in prayer. Father, today, stir our hearts. We know there will be a day and a time at the end of time when the Righteous will be separated from the unrighteous. When those who have, have, have accepted Christ as their Savior will be received into eternal kingdom of God and the presence and the peace of God while those who have not, those who have rejected Christ, they will be damned to hell forever. God, give us a burden for the lost. Individually, help us, Father, to see each person that we come across as a soul that is going to spend eternity somewhere. And as we cast that net, God, give us a burden to be able to share the gospel with those that we meet, realizing we may be the only Christian that they know. We don't save them but you've called us as believers. You've called us as believers to be your ambassadors and to be your messengers of the gospel first and foremost. Forgive me, God, when I've made it about politics, when I've made it about fiddles, when I've made it about weather, when I've made it about everything and anything except you. I thank you, God, for the ones who took the time to share your good news with me. Help me today, Father, to be faithful 
and to pass that on to others who will pass it on to others as well. It's in the name of Christ we pray these things. Amen.